I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. High performance 2.3 liter Mustang. Mustang EcoBoost convertible with launch control. <laughs> it's it's fine, it's just weird that it's not a five liter Mustang. Let's get to the horsepower and torque. 330 horsepower, 350 pound-feet of torque from a 2.3 liter EcoBoost four-cylinder. These are good numbers. This is basically the Focus RS engine, which is pretty cool. It's just the sounds are coming out of the wrong car. And um, even though we've been doing car reviews for like six years, over 500, it's the first time we got behind the wheel of one of these, so. Honestly, we've kind of avoided it because um, I kind of wanted to know why, and you wanted to know why this exists, and I'm still trying to justify that, but I have some thoughts on this car. Hit me with your thoughts. First, I'm gonna downshift because we do have the optional valved exhaust. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have flat foot shifting, but Yo, I'm kind of doing it like that. RIP BRZ86. <laughs> okay, so this has the optional 2.3 liter high output performance package. So let's send that package through Cliche Corner because it gives you so many different things, suspension things, uh, appearance things, exhaust things. Here we go. Okay, so I almost Mustanged us there. Uh, yeah, it doesn't handle very well. Uh, it's, it's okay. It's very bouncy and rubbery feeling. I don't, I don't love it. Yeah, I mean, the Mach 1 exists. Yes, uh, the V8 exists and we all know that and we're, we're gonna stick to the 2.3 liter. Things I do like about it, it actually sounds kind of good for this application. So I'm gonna bounce it off the limiter because it's kind of fun in second. That's kind of cool. I, I like the sound. You so know, do you I. You know I like my, my non-V8. It's just coming out of the wrong car. Yeah, the, if this looked like a probe. Yes. Perfect. Or a Focus RS. <laughs> if a Focus RS was rear wheel drive only and then they still made them and it was just this. Convertible Focus RS though, let's be real. Yeah, dude, four door convertible. What I don't particularly like about this is the transmission. It's uh, doing the second to third shift isn't the best. And I know people don't like the transmission as it's applied to the five liter V8 as well. The Tremec in the Mach 1 is just incredible though. All right, the transmission's like, the shifting, it's not the worst. It's, it's not. It's pretty nice. Yeah. The pedal placement's really good, and underneath the pedals, we got our tux mat. Yeah, shout out tux mat. These mats are incredible. There's so much more coverage from these mats compared to the OEM mats, and the biggest difference, especially, is in the back. And they look really good. It looks like something that matches perfect from the factory. So click the link below to input your details and see what tux mat product is available for your car. Do a heel toe downshift in a straight line. You can do it. <laughs> Probably because I'm Yo, bouncing perfectly off that tux mat. No auto rev matching. Yeah, which is kind of funny in a 2023 vehicle. You oh, kind of like expect it. Got it these but days. I mean, it's elephant good, good. in the room, the 2024 Mustang has already been announced and shown. We should probably talk about that a little bit. I think it looks cool. I think it looks pretty it cool. Looks like a really cool Camaro. Yeah, but I think the previous one, the one that we're driving actually still looks better. But once we drive that one and adapt to that one, I'm sure we're gonna think that that one no, looks better. Oh, 94 Mustang looks best. Yo, Fox body looks best. Early Fox body looks best. No, not the four eyes. But the funny part is they added the Fox Body 87 to 93 gauge cluster as a digital gauge to the 2024 Mustang. So that's yeah, cool. I'm just waiting for the IROC Z to come back. Let's go Camaro. Yeah, yeah. Insert, insert Yuri as skeleton waiting. <laughs> but more on this 2.3 liter Eco Beast. Uh, it sounds like they kind of made it sound V8-ish, like that thumpiness right there, like V8-ish. This would be really awesome, fully tuned up. And I think I've seen a guy with a badge that said Eco Beast. Yeah, for sure. Like, that's cool. Like, if you're a tuner, like, that's It's still awesome. cool. Like, if you take the Mustang name off of it for a second, it's a rear-wheel drive manual sports car with pretty good horsepower that sounds okay. But, like, having a shitty engine optional in a Mustang is, like, tradition. Look, 
I'm doing my best to justify the existence of this uh, rental Didn't spec. Did grandma Maybe. have a four-cylinder Mustang? She did. The Fox body? Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't even like the cool like SVO one. Like it was just the four-cylinder yeah, Fox yeah, body. Yeah, yeah, grandma spec. But anyways, let's get you into here to launch control this thing that sounds like my Fiesta launch control. <laughs> Just launch it. It's nice, nice little chill car. It's really not bad. The first time that I drove this car a couple days ago, I thought I would hate it, and I legitimately do not hate this car. No, I don't hate it either. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Yes. <laughs> um, it might make sense for fuel economy. This will have theoretically better fuel economy than the V8, although it's still not very good. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if you get this, you need to try extra hard and drive even harder than like a V8 would. Exactly. Oh, shift lights. Yeah, dude. It's fun. It is. It's just a Mustang, which is the weird part. Have we driven like a automatic, non-special Mustang? Uh, no. That'd probably make it worse. Yeah. <laughs> Th then it would be full rental spec. Yeah, this, yeah. We still have a manual, so it is still fun. Looks, what's different with this? Because uh, I guess, I, I don't know. Nothing really. Uh, basically, when you get the 2.3 liter performance package, then you kind of get like a GT-ish front fascia, and like that's kind of it. We have double dual exhaust so out that, back. That surprises me, because it's like someone like, BMW wouldn't let that happen. They're like, right. no, it must be a square. Yes. Oh, speaking of squares slash rectangles, the badge, holy crap. They made the biggest 2.3 liter badge they possibly could have. Yeah, it's pretty funny. I don't really think you should be advertising that that hard. And then in here, we also have that badge in here with a numbered chassis, which is uh, kind of interesting as well. I bet you these are going to be like, if it's like the fully done up 2.3 liter, like they'll be kind of rare in the future future. Yeah, and I mean, it is cool. Like there is some heritage to this, like the SVO in the in the 80s and stuff Maybe like that. Maybe they needed to build this so people in like Europe could drive it. Maybe. Or are they capped at two liters? I, I, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> like, I think it's cool. Yeah, it's just not great. <laughs> It's a four-cylinder! <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> so this is kind of like competing with the uh, Nissan Z? Yeah, I mean, price-wise, this being a convertible as well, there's no convertible new one yet. This kind of competes with a lot of crazy stuff, So like BRZ, now this is more than that, a BRZ or an 86, but it's also like, probably is similarly quick. A Miata. A Miata, yeah. An RF, price-wise. Oh, convertible-ish. I think I'd actually go with the Miata. Well, obviously. Yeah. And price-wise, as this one spec, it also competes with a Mustang GT, okay. a V8 five liter. Uh, before we get to the price, <laughs> backseat room, very minimal, but you're not gonna muddy it up because we got the Tuxmat back there all the way across. Exactly, and then front seats are still really comfortable, kind of race couch, but still bolstered. This is, yeah, nice, nice big, big seats. Yes, very comfortable. And we have all of the same drive modes that we would have in a regular Mustang GT. We even have drag strip mode, Yuri. Yeah, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, infotainment screen. It's a couple of those things are buried in the infotainment for climate, but volume knob, tuning knob. Guess what? Ford don't care because there's a new one coming around the corner. You're lucky you still get to buy this in 2023. Exactly. And what about the cup holders? It looks like it'll fit a medium cup. I'm not sure about a small cup. Yeah. And the visors. Three, two, one. Full pass, good job. Uh, amazing. And it's cool that we have a manual handbrake. Yes. For ripping burnies and slideys. Look, I'm gonna say it like, this car is all right, but it's just weird. Yeah, and that's I'm, exactly I'm, I'm it. And I'm definitely okay with this thing existing for whoever wants to buy it. I just don't understand why. Yeah, I would never look at purchasing one of these, especially because the GT is actually cheaper than the, this particular one that we're driving. Yo, if, if Honda could put the uh, Civic Type R engine that way, make a rear-wheel drive S2000 again. Like, that'd be kind of like this or something. It'd be yeah. cool. And one of the best parts of this particular one that we're driving is how it's spec'd. These wheels look amazing. Oh, I love these wheels. They're like my favorite wheels on any Mustang. They're so simple. What would be the Continental recommended tire for a Mustang? 
the Extreme Contact Sport 02, which is their brand new high performance tire. Or a Viking Contact 7 because you can drive rear wheel drive in winter, you can drive manual rear wheel drive in winter, you can drive manual rear wheel drive convertible in winter, everything is fine. You absolutely can. Go to continentaltire.com slash the straight pipes, check out your recommended tire, and there is currently a promotion for up to $70 Visa prepaid card. Okay. Is that everything we want to talk about with this EcoBoost Mustang? Yes, other than the price. Yeah, get to the price. What's this Mustang competing with the GT Mustang? Okay, so this one starts at $43,775. Canadian. And this one is optioned out to $55,925. How much is a Mustang GT? $10,000 less than this for a base Mustang GT Coupe. But you, you know, like we always say, get the top trim of the car you're gonna get and somebody spec this out like that. Yeah. Because this is a cool car. Like, it is. Would this be cooler than a base five liter GT? No, that's 10 grand more, less. That, that makes it 10 times cooler. <laughs> so I guess let us know in the comments below, would you take this EcoBoost Mustang over a $10,000 less Mustang GT and find those on tsp.truecar.com. Discounted price offers, and I legitimately wanna know from any EcoBoost Mustang owner, why did you buy the EcoBoost? Was it to save money because you got a different spec than a GT? You just wanted the interior features? You actually liked the four cylinder? You wanted the fuel economy? I don't know. You wanted a convertible? Let me know, please. Yeah, I'm confused too, but definitely more respect for seeing any of these on the road because of how fun these actually are. Legitimately fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>